Hey, good morning to you. Welcome back to Why in the Morning. And if it's Tuesday, it's Entrepreneurship Tuesday at Y254 channel. Is where you can find us across all our social. At Michelle Shira is where you can find me across all my social media. In this particular session, we dive into an interview that looks at what it takes to launch a successful fashion business. Instead, I'm joined with Vivian Ta. I hope I'm saying this right. Vivian Ta. She's a fashion designer. Hi, Vivian. Good morning. Hi, hi. <laughs> did I get that right first? Yes, 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 you did. Oh, it's Ta. Is it like Ta Light? Yes, yes, absolutely. Oh, I got that right. How are you doing? <laughs> you look gorgeous. Thank you. I'm doing great. Uh -huh. uh, it's a chilly morning, mm -hmm. but uh, we're bringing the sunshine. All right. Yes. For people who are always on screen, they might not, <laughs> this is not like their first time seeing you, right? So you do a couple, you wear a couple of hats. I do, I do. Yeah, so let's, uh, apart from you being a fashion designer. I am a politician. There you have it. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> Uh, I'm also a, a governance analyst mm -hmm. and um, I also do a bit of communication. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're so powerful about uh, uh, leadership, right? Uh, why is that? Because you also, you were in uh, the president. Uh, Miss President. Miss President. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, when, I, when I applied to, to be on it, I, did, I actually didn't think I would be considered because mm -hmm. uh, my background was not, like I had zero political <laughs> uh, background. Mm -hmm. So I just had like maybe my communication and my fashion um, experience. So I didn't think I would be considered because I, I thought, you know, I'm not your typical um, kind of person who gets into like leadership mm -hmm. but surprise surprise I <laughs> I got onto the show and I was representing Nairobi County mm -hmm. and I think that is how I got ushered into the leadership political leadership space uh, because through Miss President I was able to go through like governance training public speaking and several other trainings that just like prepare you for the leadership space. All right. yeah. You mentioned something interesting. You say that you're surprised that you actually got in. What is your background? Because you said your background is not in a political space. Yeah, no, my background is um, I've studied fashion, mm -hmm. but then I'm, I'm also a marketing and communication specialist. Mm -hmm. So that's my background professionally. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I do. So I did, I thought when I applied for Miss President, I thought they would be considering people who have have maybe served in public service or have some sort of political, you know, experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Speaking so about fashion, that's the reason why you're here. Yes. That's the reason why you're here, darling. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, where did this love of fashion start? The passion of it, and when did uh, is it Vivian? Vivian uh, Ta? Yes. Start. Start. So, so the interesting thing is um, the business. It's eponymous. We share a name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, just like uh, your big fashion houses, the Gucci's of this world, mm. it's, the same, it's the same concept, mm -hmm. more or less. Uh, it's about leaving a legacy. So anyway, my, my fashion journey started when I was very young. I just didn't realize it. Uh, when I was growing up, my mother, who was not a fashion designer, she was an accountant by profession, mm -hmm. uh, used to make our clothes. So we had a sewing machine at home. And growing up, I always interacted like with patterns, fabric, and you know, just the things that people use to to make garments. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was like the beginning of my interaction uh, with fashion. Mm -hmm. um, my mother unfortunately passed on. Mm -hmm. um, Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, she had cancer and she passed on, and it was a really, really difficult time. Mm -hmm. So during that time, I was trying to find a way to handle my my grief mm -hmm. while still, you know, just keeping the memory of my mom alive. And I just mm -hmm. remembered that she enjoyed, you know, fashion, and it's something also that I had liked, even mm -hmm. though I had not pursued it. Mm -hmm. So that's when I decided to go back to enroll uh, in a fashion course at mm -hmm. Buruburu Institute of Fine Arts, mm -hmm. and then I studied, and then I went to our house, took her old like stuff machine and everything and i just started initially when i started it wasn't supposed to be like a business it was mm. just like a hobby it's but something it, you love yeah but then it, it just like grew mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah i made a, a couple of clothes for myself just you know for fun mm -hmm. and um, my colleagues where i was working at that time were like wow we like your clothes make for us in the beginning i thought they were just joking but you know they really insisted and i i started you know making for them 
And then, you know, they'll just send one to other people and more people would come. Eventually, I had to get, like, people to help me out. Mm. And that's just how it started. Oh, wow. Five years down the road, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Speaking about five years, right, let's look at a couple of, it, uh, of your achievements. In 2019, you got to actually represent Kenya in the celebration of Silk. Tell, tell us I more about did. your It was an amazing, amazing experience. Mm -hmm. um, I was selected. Um, the, the celebration of Silk is... Um, a national event in Thailand. It's supported by the Queen, mm -hmm. uh, and silk is a national like fabric in Thailand. It, they they make a lot of silk. They are known for silk. Mm -hmm. So uh, they had designers from like f over fifty countries, um, and I was selected for for Kenya. So I joined designers from all over the world: South Africa, Par you know, France, UK, the US. It was it was an amazing amazing experience, um, and we got to create garments specifically using silk. Uh, mm -hmm. to showcase um, for the queen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. For you, when it started off, as you, you said earlier on, it was not in a, in a perspective of you getting into business. But it's something yes. that you love. Yes. You're passionate about it. Yeah. At what particular point were you like, aha, uh -huh, I can make a business out of this? Uh, I think at the point when now the orders were becoming uh, a lot mm -hmm. and it wasn't something that I could just take lightly anymore mm -hmm. that's when it struck me that oh you know what this thing has potential I can actually monetize it and, and create it into into a real business so I just used my background of you know no management and and marketing and I built the brand and I built the business mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah what, what were a couple of things that you paid attention to during the early stages of your business when it comes to just branding and putting your uh, your name out there for potential clients um, I think from the very basic is of course uh, coming up with with uh, a concept of what do you want the business to be to be known for to be called um, because that defines how you will develop like a logo, a business name, you know, register the business. Um, and then, of course, just put structures in place in terms of the human resources you need, the skill sets you need, um, the financial management. It's a whole um, <laughs> thing that you have to handle. Mm -hmm. Yes. Was there a business plan? I did not have a written down business plan. I came to do that much later, mm -hmm. <laughs> much later. I got the opportunity to attend some business trainings. Uh, and so I learned the importance. I mean, I knew about the business plan, but you know how when something just starts and you had not really planned for it, so you mm -hmm. just kind of run with it. But later on, I realized, okay, you know, it's important to have a business plan so that you, you have a clear vision of where you're going, so now I have a business plan, yeah, all right, nice. <laughs> which I keep refining uh -huh. uh, with time. Uh -huh. Yeah, I keep it. It's like a live document. So I have the initial one that I did, uh, and I just keep developing it and improving on it oh. as we go along. Right. What were what were the top major platforms for you when it comes to just marketing your products? Um, I think one of the very first ones was working with Kambua. Uh, I think I dressed her for about a year uh, for her show on. Citizen TV, I can't remember what the show is called, but she had a show uh, on, on Sundays. Mm -hmm. So I used, to, I used to be the designer that dresses her. And then I also worked with um, the National Olympics Committee. Uh, they, they had this big sports event that they were doing for athletes. I think sports, sports person of the year, Soya. Mm -hmm. It's called Soya. Mm -hmm. So I was the lead designer and I was dressing the athletes and most of the organizers. Oh. So that was a huge platform uh, okay. because I got to meet a lot of people, make a lot of contacts, mm -hmm. and grow. All right. yeah. Still, uh, still on that uh, uh, spot of marketing for someone who's watching us and uh, really struggling when it comes to marketing uh, pro pro products or services. Yeah. Uh, what are the top three hackers when it comes to that? I think social media. Mm -hmm. Uh, number one, okay, maybe even before you get to social media, you have to define your product mm -hmm. and your brand mm -hmm. um, because every that is what differentiates you. If you don't have a, 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 na a product name or brand, it's very difficult to differentiate you from every, every other player in the market. So you need to, if it's, if it's a product you're selling, you need to brand it so that it's different from every other you know, similar product like that in the market. So after you brand it, you need to uh, uh, know who is your target market, who are you targeting to buy the product, and then now get onto social media to, to market it, to talk about it, but still targeting 
talking, speaking to the people you intend to buy the product. I'd say those are my top three. Make sure you brand your product so that it's differentiated. Uh, identify who your target market is. Because if you don't, you'll end up like all over the place. Mm -hmm. And you end up selling maybe to the wrong market. Mm -hmm. You see, not every market is for you. So you need to identify which market is for your product. Mm -hmm. Identify them and then target them with the communication you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and social media has made it uh, so much easier now. All right. When you speak about uh, now pricing, uh, your outfits, yeah. or, or just, uh, you know, coming, breaking it down, how much it costs and everything, choosing a pricing point with uh, the competition in mind, how mm -hmm. do you go about that? Uh, pricing is dependent not just on competition, it's dependent also on production. You see, you can't price lower than your production cost. So it depends on how much you use to produce uh, whatever you're, you're, you're doing. Mm -hmm. So these things all form the basis of how you'll price your product. Uh, what, what are your production costs? What are the prevailing uh, market sort of rates? And then who are you targeting? Because if you're targeting someone who buys a garment for, say, 20000 if you give them a garment for 2000 they'll think there's something wrong with it. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. But if, you're targeting, if your target market is someone who can buy a garment for 2000 and you give it to them at 10000 they won't buy it because mm -hmm. they're just not your target market. That's why it's very important to identify who is my product for, who am I targeting. Mm -hmm. Because once you know who your target market is, even the pricing, mm -hmm. you can set it correctly. All right. Yeah. And how do you deal with competition? You learn from competition. Um, you use competition to gauge uh, maybe if you need to change something or tweak something. But competition is healthy. You need it because it, it, it's like a challenge. It keeps you like on toes uh, and it keeps you going. So I think without competition, I don't think there'd be like business. I think you'd fail. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, need, you need competition so that you're always analyzing. Mm -hmm. You're always checking yourself. Are we, how are we? You know, how are we doing? Mm. But if you have nothing for comparison, then it, it, there's really no challenge. Mm -hmm. What's the most uh, expensive uh, outfit that you've ever made? Uh, maybe a custom made like evening gown. I won't say the price, but a custom made. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting on that. I was like, yeah, here it is, here it is. A custom made, a custom made uh, gown uh -huh. that I, I made for um, one of the local celebrities for a, a, an award ceremony. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And how, as a designer, how do you come up with a realistic uh, sales and uh, distribution goals? Because I feel like if you're starting off, you'll be really excited, enthusiastic, and just... Yeah, of course, of course you need to be, because business is challenging, not just like fashion itself. Any business is challenging. But so you, you, feel, need, okay. you need that like excitement yes. and passion to uh -huh. push you, uh -huh. so that when things seem like they are not going the way you want, okay. you still have something to, to keep go you going. Oh, right. Yeah. Now, the realistic aspect of it now. Uh, what do you mean? Maybe I didn't when understand. it comes to, because everyone, when you're starting off a new journey, mm -hmm. if it's a business, you always have expectations. You, you do. You, <laughs> as I said, you're really excited. And now there, there's a space where, because you've experienced it and you've been into the game for five years. So mm. I'm so sure you have like realistic sales that you should have. Okay, so now goals, you remember yeah. that plan we spoke about? Mm -hmm. That's what keeps you in check. Uh, because the plan, mm -hmm. uh, when you're doing a business plan, okay, anyone who's done a business plan will understand this. You have like sales focused. Mm -hmm. uh, you have focused for like sales, mm -hmm. how much you expect to make like in a, in a day, in a week, in a month, all that. So those help you. Uh, become realistic and and you see these things you can adjust them over time like after you've done business for a month you mm -hmm. can realize hey, okay maybe I set my forecasts maybe too high and mm -hmm. you can now readjust them mm -hmm. so that's why a business plan is important because it helps you know in this next month I expect to make this much oh, right. and to make this much these are the things I need to do so that I am making this much. All right. Yeah. Do you, oh, sorry. Continue. It's okay. <laughs> you, you're done? <laughs> All right. Um, so when it comes to just uh, custom making yeah. uh, outfits, do you import all of your fabrics? Not, not all. Most of it we buy locally. Um, just for very specific um, maybe dresses and only like maybe when I travel, 
because you see fabric is not something you can easily buy online you need to touch you need to feel and know that it's the correct thing mm -hmm. so most of the things we just buy locally mm -hmm. yeah well, what a couple of uh, even before we get into challenges there's something i want to ask and uh, i missed this out on our first conversation let me take you back when okay. it comes to capital in your story mm -hmm. you mentioned that it was your friends who actually were pushing you to you know make this for us and, yeah and, uh, do this for us and they really saw that you're actually talented in it yeah i believe was that the first part where you got your first capital? So actually what helps me is, remember I told you I took some of my mom's things, like oh yes, the yes, sewing yes. machine yeah. and just some stuff that she had yes. she used to use. So that got me started. Oh you right. see, like some of the things, like in fashion, mm -hmm. if you don't have a sewing machine, it's hard. Yeah. But you see, for me, I was lucky because I, I had like something to start with. Okay, okay. So that got me started. All and right. I was working at the time. Mm -hmm. I, I was employed at the time. Mm -hmm. So it was easy to, you know, set aside money mm -hmm. for, for the business. Okay. Yeah. And uh, did you get to a point whereby you, uh, you included an investor or even... Partners. No, actually, I, I, I never really did. <laughs> and I haven't gotten to that point yet. Maybe mm -hmm. we will mm -hmm. at some point, but not yet. At what particular point do you think that you'll be in need of an investor? or for a Maybe like at a, as, at a growth stage okay. after um, you are now you, you have structures mm -hmm. established mm -hmm. and uh, the business is at a point where now you want to scale, mm -hmm. then, then you'd need investors. All right. yeah. okay, okay. A couple of uh, financial lessons that you've learned along the way? Uh, pay yourself. Mm -hmm. Pay yourself first mm -hmm. uh, as an entrepreneur. You didn't used to pay yourself? I, in the beginning, I didn't. <laughs> the lines were blood. Mm -hmm. But yes, as an entrepreneur, pay yourself a salary. When you're planning... Um, like uh, payroll at the end of the month you are also an employee in the company so first oh first register the business okay <laughs> register the business make sure your care and everything is sorted mm -hmm. is good because mm -hmm. those things can come and bite you in the later yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so yes. <laughs> Uh, make sure you're, you're, you're properly registered. Mm -hmm. um, it's good if you can register it as a limited company, all the better. If you can't, just do the, the business name. But I'd, I'd advise a, 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 a limited company is better. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, now you'll have like the company bank account and, and you know, just the company is an entity on its own. Mm. But yes, one of the lessons I learned is pay yourself because mm -hmm. sometimes you, you get so caught up in, and you know, when, when a business is new, you're everything. Mm -hmm. You are the admin, you are the salesperson, you're everything, you're the, the IT person, everything. <laughs> so sometimes you, you forget mm. that you also need to pay yourself. Even if it's 10,000, mm -hmm. just pay yourself so that, I mean, there's a record and you can grow it over time. Mm -hmm. So that's one. What's the other lesson? You, you, if you're not good in accounting you need to get an accountant even if it's just on part-time basis uh, so that they are able to keep track of your business expenses and uh, and revenue sales and records please keep records please 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 keep records mm -hmm. because records will tell you how you're doing the health of the business mm -hmm. um, in the beginning for me it was crazy because the lines would get blood I'd spend some of my money on the business and we wouldn't declare and sometimes we'd take the business money and spend it on personal stuff. So, but those are things I learned over time. Mm -hmm. So keep a clear distinction between your personal expenses as mm -hmm. the entrepreneur. So different bank accounts can work. Yes. So mm -hmm. have your own personal and have a different one for the business mm -hmm. and separate the money so that whatever is being used for the business is different from your own personal cash. Okay. Yeah. A couple of challenges that you faced. <sighs> challenges lay um, uh, staff mm -hmm. like team uh, it's it's not very easy especially when the business is starting to to get skilled uh, people to work with you because at that time you're not able to like the guys are really good you, maybe you can't afford them and now the guys you can afford maybe are not really good so they're not giving you the output you you want uh, so that's a bit tricky also that was that was a, a challenge so you have to get a balance you can decide what worked for me is you can decide to take someone who's maybe not at the skill level you you want but you can work with them mm -hmm. and train them so that they get to the place where you want mm -hmm. uh, one of the other challenges is of course access to to credit N not capital but credit because when you're doing business you need uh, cash flow 
Mm -hmm. So you need constantly, you need um, like money to, to pay salaries, to pay rent, to pay, you know, bills and all that, to buy uh, uh, raw material and all that. So banks, it's not very easy. It's not very, I'm lucky my bank uh, was supportive, <laughs> mm -hmm. but not everybody. Yeah, it's not always the case. Yeah, it's not always the case. And it's still a challenge I experienced before. Of course, I had, I sat down with my bank and we had a discussion and it took a lot of time. It wasn't something that just happened like overnight. Mm -hmm. It took a lot of convincing and telling them about the business and all that before they actually agreed to, to come on board and, and just, you know, lend me some you know, latitude in terms of credit. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's another challenge I know a lot of businesses face. Right. Um, I think those are the top two. Top two, yeah? Yeah. All right. As we wind up, uh, uh, from where you're seated and from your experience, what would you say that what it takes to just launch a successful fashion brand? Uh, it takes grit. You need to be <laughs> resilient. Uh, okay, you need passion, but passion is not enough. Mm -hmm. uh, so you need passion. You need to be resilient and you need skill. So if you're not skilled in a certain area, please acquire it. Mm -hmm. uh, you're never too old to learn. So if you need to learn, like I wasn't really good in, in finance, so it's not my background, but I had to learn because it's something the business needs. You see, you can't afford a full-time like accountant, but you need to know, at least before your part-time guy comes, mm. you need to know what's happening. Mm -hmm. So if you're not good at it, learn learn mm -hmm. so be open to learning um be resilient you will face challenges but it's not the end of the world you will survive <laughs> and then also network uh, meet up with other entrepreneurs mm -hmm. because when you talk to other entrepreneurs like in your same field you realize oh i'm not the only one facing these challenges um. and it kind of gives you um i don't know how, how do i call this like sort of a family mm -hmm. that you're not on your own you're not on your own mm. so don't don't do business by yourself um you remember you asked me about competition yes so what happens is you find out that i'm not the only fashion designer in nairobi mm -hmm. there, there, there are many but yes they may be competition when they may be viewed as competition when it comes to sales but when it comes to we're in the same industry we are facing the same challenges you are now uh, comrades mm. because you're, you're sort of, you know, going through the same thing. Same thing. So when you interact, you, so you know how yeah, to so deal with the you challenges. Interact, sometimes you exchange exactly. notes, uh -huh. you understand, oh, this is, this is, sometimes even if it's a challenge you've not experienced before, you can turn to one of them mm. and they'll be like, oh, do this, this worked for to me. To avoid this and yeah, this. Yeah, so it's not, that's why I said competition is not bad. Okay. You, you need each other. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, I like what you said. Uh, you mentioned something that you're never too old to learn. Yeah. And uh, I saw there's a meme going around that, if uh, are you fearing that you're at the age of probably 28, uh -huh. that taking up a new course because uh, four years down the, lo uh, down the road you'll be that 30, 30 <laughs> what? Two, I think. 32, yeah? Uh, so it'll be like, you'll still be 32 for years. Later. <laughs> <laughs> so better just take that course yeah, that no, you just no, you, you learn. Every day yeah. you learn. Uh, I think that's the essence of life. Mm. You can never stop learning. I uh, just think about it this way. When a child is born, mm -hmm. they're not born walking. Mm. But eventually they'll walk, then they'll run, you know. Very true. And, and they continue. It's, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a continuous process until someone leaves the earth. All right, we've come to the end of our conversation. Uh -huh. I'm looking forward to have, you know, more interacting conversation on different uh, topics, c yeah. considering that you wear so many different hats. <laughs> so thank you very much, Vivian Ta, for creating time to be with us. So how can people find you across all social media handles? Um, at Vivian Ta. Mm -hmm. Vivian is V-I-V-I-E-N-E, -E, French. Mm -hmm. <laughs> T-A-A. -A. Right. That's, that's the handle for the fashion business. All right. My handle is separate. It's different. All right. Yeah. So that is Vivian Ta, fashion designer. Make sure you follow up with her if you want to keep the conversation going. If you have different questions for her, make sure you reach out to her at Y254 channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles. At Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my social uh, media handles. We'll be right back with so much more right here on Y in the morning. And if it's Tuesday, you know how we do it. It's Entrepreneurship Tuesday.